nearly half a million people working in a British industry. The industry has got a, a huge role to play in the sort of economic wealth of the planet. A European country virtually self-sufficient in oil. Oil is the basic wealth of a nation if you have it and cherishing it, nourishing it, encouraging it, controlling it was what national policy should be about. A bigger oil producer than Kuwait. I've never been to a casino in the world in my life. Uh, which, uh, but I work in the biggest casino in the world. It's the oil industry. This is our oil industry. Could it be the key to understanding Scotland? Its past, its present, and its future. Hello. I'm Hayley Miller. For the last 10 years, I've been BBC Scotland's business correspondent. A few months back, when the price of crude oil broke through $100 a barrel, it was splashed across every newspaper and every news programme. And with an oil industry off the Scottish coast worth billions and billions of pounds, I wanted to find out what oil really means to Scotland. This investigation would take me back into the past and forward to the future. And what I'd find out is that understanding oil helps you to understand Scotland and its place in the world. America is addicted to oil. Oil shaped the 20th century. It's so valuable that countries fight wars over it. In 1990, Saddam Hussein's Iraqi army blew up the oil wells as they retreated from Kuwait. Some historians believe Hitler lost the Second World War because he didn't have enough of it. And today, oil is so important to our lives, a rising price causes chaos. It's now as high, I think, today as $130 a barrel. And I think all of you know the impact that's having on household bills and the follow-through uh, for prices of consumer goods like, uh, like uh, food. So how important must oil be to a country like Scotland, where we have it right on our doorstep? Having your own oil gives you political muscle. Margaret Thatcher's top civil servant, Sir Bernard Ingham, believes having your own oil supply is vital to a nation-state. If we didn't have it, how much would we have to pay across the world for it? Because the price is going up. And how much more insecure would, be, would we be, given Mr. Putin's proclivities uh, in switching off the oil and, of course, the fact that a lot of oil and gas is in the hands of Islamic nations. Britain's oil or Scotland's oil? A contentious question. Whatever your answer, oil's been pumping ashore in Scotland for the past 30 years, and yet few of us see ourselves as an oil nation. I need to get to the bottom of Scotland's relationship with oil, so I'm heading off to see this industry for myself. Claymore started processing oil just over 30 years ago. It's been owned and operated by the Canadian company Talisman Energy for the last eight. It was just coming back on stream after a two-week maintenance shutdown when I arrived. 23-year-old Glenn Graffin is one of the latest generation of offshore workers. Yeah, go ahead, Richard. Yeah, I'm in position now, if everything's all right up there. Yes, that's okay. So what are you saying to him here? What, what's about to happen? Uh, he's about to open it up and then, I mean, everyone's quite steady here, so you should see uh, Gordon's opened up another well. Okay. There, and it should... 
I soon find out there are nearly 40 different wells producing oil here. Glenn tells me that Claymore's massive pipeline sends the oil to the Flotter terminal in Orkney and that the pipeline's running at capacity. Never had to go up there, thankfully. It's quite high up. You see all the drilling pipes. I think they said they're a way to start doing some drilling work, whether it's intervention or if they're drilling a new hole, I'm not sure. This is a huge industrial complex. It's unlike any I've seen before. It happens to be sitting in the North Sea, in the middle of nowhere. This is my first time offshore, and what I find so remarkable about it is just how much of a sense of community there is here. It's like living in a remote village, and it's totally self-contained. They generate their own electricity, their own water. Apart from that, everything else has to be brought here by boat. There are 284 platforms like this, and I've discovered that in total they produce more oil than Kuwait. Why don't we hear about that? Is it a case of out of sight, out of mind? Claymore has been here since the late 70s, but to understand our relationship with oil, I need to go further back in my investigation. It all started back in the 60s when Scotland beat the world champions and Celtic became the first British team to win the European Cup. Gas had been found off the coast of England. But something much bigger was about to happen off Scotland. In Aberdeen, a young economist was getting excited about the potential treasure in the North Sea. He eventually became the official historian of North Sea oil. It wasn't until uh, 69 uh, when uh, the, the, the uh, big discovery of Ekofisk in the uh, Norwegian sector was made that more interest in the central sector came. And, of course, it was all dramatised by the discovery of Fortes in 1970. Okay, you ready? Okay, here we go. We have crash lap now. So, uh, by the mid-70s, it was clear uh, that, that the UK continental shelf was going to be a major province, uh, even by world standards. With the 70s came a time for celebration, and not just because of oil. At the Edinburgh Commonwealth Games, Scotland won 25 medals. And Ian Stewart wins from Ian McCavity. Lulu was the top female singer. Boom, bang, 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 close to you. And the Bay City Rollers and their tartan trues were taking the country by storm. But the truth was that Scotland and the rest of Britain were struggling. Three-day weeks and uncollected rubbish were crippling the country. Gradually, even though a single drop of oil hadn't yet come ashore, the government was pinning its hopes on the North Sea. In 1972, a young Scottish economist was headhunted from his position at Oxford University to become economic advisor to the Scottish office. For the next 20 years, it was a role which Gavin McCrone fulfilled. He recalls how important North Sea oil was to become. I think Edward Heath, the Prime Minister, was very concerned about this. I mean, I think he, he saw that there was going to be benefit. And the United Kingdom was in a very difficult economic situation then, and he saw North Sea oil as something that had to be developed fast in order to give us some help. I think it was when oil discoveries started coming in thick and fast. And you know, you would hear that an oil discovery had been made then some years, some time later, whether it was commercially viable and so on. But that started to happen thick and fast, and that created a totally different atmosphere. Uh, quite exciting, actually. The excitement about oil was running high in Scotland. The Scottish National Party sent 11 MPs to Westminster on the slogan, It's Scotland's Oil. Everyone wanted to be a part of the new black gold. <laughs> 